Chapter 44 Drawing a Blank Twilight had had several ideas about what would happen when she left the Ponyville Town Guard Station. She had figured she would be swarmed by hundreds of curious ponies gathering around to behold the alicorn that had suddenly appeared in their humble little town, drawn to her like moths to a flame, bringing with them an endless torrent of questions and concerns that would all blend together into an incomprehensible mass of noise. She imagined her wings would be irritatingly tugged at and her horn yanked to and fro by the more rowdy members of the herd in some vain attempt to disprove her status as an alicorn. Without a doubt, Spike would have been caught up in the chaos too, either lost in the sea of swarming ponies or an unfortunate victim of the same poking and prodding the Twilight was. The reality of the situation was very different from what she was expecting. She had been walking alongside Rainbow and Spike for a decent amount of time now, and over that time they hadn't been accosted once. Not a single pony had approached them or even spoke to them, much to Twilight's confusion. And it wasn't as if there wasn't anyone around either. The trio had passed a number of individuals as they went about their business, and they were certainly noticed. People stared, murmured amongst themselves at the sight of the group, and tried to go about their days in spite of the oddity. It was unsettling, to put a word to it, but very subdued compared to what she had been expecting. So, this isn't what I was expecting. Twilight's eyes slowly scanned the street where she had made her home. There weren't as many people here as there were at the Market Street, but there was still a noticeable amount. Their reactions were the same as all the others. I figured someone would have jumped us by now, Spike added, turning his head to look around and scan for possible interlopers. It was clear he was just as anxious as Twilight was. <laughs> I'm shocked Pinky hasn't jumped us yet. Dash gave a snorting chuckle before taking on a marginally more professional tone. But you two can calm down. I went out of my way to make sure you two wouldn't have any trouble. This alarmed Twilight more than it eased her. What did you do? Had the mayor make a public statement? Long story short, she told everyone to act like adults. And that actually worked? Well, I don't see you drawing a crowd, so my money says yes. Rainbow Dash smirked and waved a wing to emphasize the lack of people swarming them. And besides, if you were one of us mere mortals, would you want to do something stupid to piss off an alicorn? That was a very good point, Twilight realized with a small bit of embarrassment. It hadn't even crossed her mind, but thinking about it now it made perfect sense why no one was approaching her. Who would want to be the one to push the wrong button and send Twilight over the edge? The incident with the guards probably didn't help the situation either. While it was a given that everyone knew about Twilight being an alicorn, who knew just how many people had heard rumors about her little standoff? If that information was floating freely around, it would be a miracle if anyone even spoke to Twilight again. But that wasn't her chief concern, not by a long shot. There were more pressing things to deal with. Right. So, anyway, her message said that I would know where to find her. Twilight said, changing the subject. So that either means the Everfree or the Library. They were already walking towards the library anyway, for one reason or another. Might as well, it was the closer of the two possible options anyway. Dash raised a brow towards Twilight, as if questioning the sudden change of topic, but she didn't voice any strong opinions about it. You sure about that? Positive. Ish. Rainbow furrowed her brow in frustration. Ugh, ish. The message said I would know, and I don't know anywhere else she would go. Uh, guys? Spike chimed in meekly. I feel like I'm missing something here. You keep talking about a message. Did I miss something? That was when Twilight stopped walking, her two companions stopping to see what was wrong. Ah. <sighs> At Twilight's own doing, Spike was entirely unaware of the memory-altering spell that had been cast on him, and until now, Twilight had planned on keeping it that way. 
The plan had been to have Starlight Glimmer undo the spell whenever they found her, have Spike remember and figure out what exactly happened when he had had his run-in with her. It had happened in their home, Twilight knew that much, but aside from that, nothing. It was only now, after Spike's question, that Twilight saw the hole in her plan. Starlight Glimmer was an enigma. They had no reason to trust her right now. Would she even undo the memory spell in the first place? She could very easily refuse to do so. Or, even more likely, spin a different spell to plant false memories in place of Spike's true ones to make her seem more trustworthy. There were just too many unknowns, too many variables at play here, and Twilight felt a surge of frustration for not taking them into account. But as quickly as she found those errors in her initial plan, she was quick to devise a countermeasure. She hated it, and herself for even coming up with it, but it was the only way she could figure out on how to get around Starlight's potential trickery. We need to go home first. That was all she said before changing course, ignoring the group of ponies that scattered off the street she was now headed down. Uh, why? Rainbow asked, clearly upset, as she and Spike closed the distance. In case you forgot, we need intel, and time is definitely not on our side here. What could you possibly need from your house? Intel. Twilight grimaced. She subtly gestured towards Spike. The signal was lost on him, but Rainbow seemed to pick it up. Our... What? Rainbow asked, something about the situation going over her head. It seemed she wasn't entirely on the same page as Twilight regarding Spike's issues. It only made sense. Twilight had never outright said it, only implied it when Dash asked. The confusion was to be expected, really. How are we going to get intel at your place? Twilight grimaced not looking forward to what came next. The same way she got Knox to deliver that message. It only took a moment for Rainbow to catch on to the implication, and she didn't seem pleased with what she th thought. You sure that's a good idea? Not really? Twilight's answer lacked any sort of confidence, her eyes staring a thousand yards ahead of her. We can't just go in unprepared. We need everything we can get before we go up there. That was all that was said. This wasn't going to be an easy thing for her to do, and she needed time to prepare herself for it. She still had time to avoid it. But she knew deep down that doing this now would save them all a lot of time and headache down the road. If he found out about his affliction during a confrontation, he would almost definitely go into a panic. Something that he didn't need any more of right now. The only way to prevent that, if it was possible at all, was to make sure he knew about it in advance. She didn't want to keep triggering the flaw in the memory blocking charm, but right now was the only option she had. Trying to undo the spell herself could prove disastrous if Starlight had put any kind of countermeasures in place, and the idea of accidentally turning her son into a vegetable did more than enough to intimidate Twilight into going through with this half-baked plan of hers. The looming sense of silent dread hanging over her wasn't lost on Spike, and he didn't hesitate to ask what was wrong. But Twilight just assured him, calmly, that everything was going to be alright. She didn't believe herself at all, but at least she was able to calm Spike down enough for them to reach their home. The house was the same mess as it had been when they left. The couch's remains were still an irreparable mess in the center of the space, and if one looked closely, they could see some of the aftermaths of Twilight and Spike's disagreement now dried onto the wooden floor. No one paid it much time or thought, and Rainbow basically ignored it. Maybe she just didn't notice? Regardless, Twilight tried her best not to linger on it, something she was able to accomplish by checking on her discarded saddlebags. Anyone could have accessed her home last night, and she feared someone had, but a cursory glance showed that nothing was out of place. I don't think anything's gone, Spike announced in a relieved tone apparently having had the same idea and checking for missing belongings. That's good. 
We have enough to worry about right now. <laughs> he chuckled and Twilight stifled a groan. <sighs> there was no backing out of this now. It had to be done. Best to just rip the band-aid off quickly. Hey, uh, Spike? Could you come here for a second? We need to talk. She didn't wait for a response before heading into the dining room. Dash was already waiting at the table with a mixed look of anxiety and boredom. As Twilight took a seat, she caught a glimpse of the Long Dragon's reaction. Spike had quickly read the room, and a similarly distraught expression to the two ponies was now on his face. Uh, sure. He slinked up into the third chair with only a short bat of hesitation, looking from Dash to Twilight with blatant concern. Um, is everything okay? Yes, almost. Twilight's eyes turned down to the floor from the shame of this all. For the life of her, she wasn't sure how to go about saying this. I need you to promise me you won't panic. This, understandably, only made Spike panic more. What? Not panic about what? Well, the thing is... Twilight slowly looked back up to her son's pleading eyes. Oh, she had gone about this in the completely wrong way, and now Spike was starting to stress out. All she had to do was tell him the truth, and then hopefully get him to tell her enough information through the gaps in Starlight's spell to figure out something. Then all they'd have to do is find the unicorn and have her undo the spell, and this mess would be done with. That was it. That was all she had to say. So why was it so difficult for her? She could almost feel the words welling up in her throat, threatening to choke the life out of her, and yet she couldn't spit them out. Spike's worried eyes weighed on her heavily, as if he had been suddenly sent to the deepest depths of the ocean. And just like in that scenario, Twilight felt like she was about to drown. What she needed to tell him wasn't even that bad, yet she just couldn't do it. Thankfully, or not, depending on your perspective, Rainbow got the conversation moving again. Ah, someone messed with your head and locked up some of your memories. Dash blurted out in an unapologetically straightforward fashion. Or at the very least, that's what I think this is about. Twilight and Spike both turned to her with wide eyes. Twilight was quick to chastise her for being so brazen, with Rainbow's defense being that they didn't have time to wait for Twilight to beat around the bush. The two started arguing in circles, going back and forth, until Spike interjected, bringing their pointless bickering to a halt. I, I'm sorry, what? Spike asked with alarm, demanding to learn more about the situation. His eyes were wide and dilated darting back and forth between the two ponies, waiting for one of them to speak up. What do you mean someone messed with my head? Spike, I need you to calm down. Twilight spoke sternly, staring deeply into Spike's eyes whenever they passed back to her. Soon enough, they stopped on her and focused, giving Twilight a window to break back through to him. You're going to be fine. It's all going to be all right. We're going to get this fixed. Okay? Take a deep breath for me. I don't even know what this is! He shouted back at her, albeit less panicked than a moment ago. What happened to me? Twilight hesitated for a moment before allowing herself to sigh. Well, she'd wanted to rip it off like a band-aid anyway. She supposed this was for the best. Even if she didn't like it. The brief lull in the discussion gave Spike an opportunity to calm down a little, transforming from frenzy to anxiety. It's exactly like Rainbow said. Twilight admitted. Remember how someone left me a message using Knox last night? Spike nodded. Yeah, you were talking about him earlier. It was there. The small bit of sarcasm was a good sign, though not really appreciated right now. 
What's that got to do with me? Well, that same pony apparently met you at some point and used the same spell to block out your memory of it. I don't know when and I don't know why. Twilight made sure to choose her words carefully. The true complexities of it all were still largely unknown, and triggering the spell's reset would make explaining things even harder than it needed to be. Spike nodded slowly, a signal that he, the information was reaching him, that Twilight wasn't sure if he was fully parsing it. And how do you know about this? My guess is that something slips through when you hear her name. Rainbow Dash interjected. Egghead shut me down pretty fast when I tried to bring it up. That's it exactly, Twilight confirmed. Whatever spell she cast isn't perfect. There are holes in it that can be exploited, but only for a few seconds. I found out about it last night while talking to Knox about... her. The room fell into silence as Spike processed the information. He looked down at the wooden table, eyes glazed over and unfocused. If Twilight knew him half as well as she thought she did, he was trying for the life of him to remember what had happened. A conscious attempt to break through the enchantment with sheer force of will. It was obvious that that wasn't going to work. But at least this all-encompassing silence allowed the tension to dwindle. Spike took a significant turn for the better. If nothing else, he wasn't shaking as much. So, uh, you're wanting to try and poke some holes and figure out what happened, right? He slowly looked back up to Twilight, curiosity having overtaken his anxiety. Dang, you hit the nail on the head, kiddo. Rats! Dash said with a small smile. The first any of them had seen in what felt like ages. Spike swallowed heavily. Um, is it going to hurt? I don't know. But it's probably going to be scary. Once again, Twilight felt as if she had just had her heart torn out of her body. The subtle reaction to Twilight's words could have been enough to kill her. And she hated herself for even bringing him into this in the first place. She should have left him in peaceful, ignorant bliss until after they'd weathered the storm. If you don't want to go through with this, that's fine. I'm not going to make you go through with it if you aren't comfortable. I just wanted you to be aware of what was going on. Much to Twilight's relief, her words seemed to put Spike at ease, at least a little. He didn't answer straight away and was clearly thinking heavily about what was going on. Once again, the room fell silent, and Twilight and Rainbow sat patiently waiting for him. Or rather, impatiently on Rainbow's behalf. At least that's how Twilight felt, given how much of a big deal she made about not wasting time. So it was okay for Spike to take his time, but not her? <laughs> she considered calling out the Black Hoof for this blatant hypocrisy but swiftly decided that it wasn't worth it. If given the choice, Twilight preferred this small kindness being given to Spike over herself. This wasn't the time to be petty. A sudden knocking at the door was enough to shatter the silence like glass. All eyes turned to the entrance, and Rainbow was the first one to stand up. I got it, she said, before making her way over to the door. Twilight figured that Rainbow was perhaps a bit put off by the whole situation, or more likely, it was just another way to save time. Whatever the reason, Dash slipped through the door and shut it behind her, leaving Spike and Twilight alone. Okay. So, um... Is doing this going to help you? Spike asked after another few seconds, his expression pensive but resolved. It should. I hope. There is no hiding Twilight's uncertainty, both a boon and a bane. She wasn't lying to Spike, but she probably wasn't doing much to quell his anxieties. All right. 
How do we do this, then? Twala was taken aback. Uh, are you sure? Not really. But I wasn't really expecting a lot of things recently. May as well just get it over with. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start saying her name. After a while, you should start remembering things. When you do, I need you to keep calm and tell me everything you can remember. Spike nodded, confirming his understanding. He spent a moment to take a few deep breaths to calm down a little more and resolve himself. It would all be over soon, Twilight hoped. And that's what she kept telling herself. A bitter taste lingered in her mouth from thrusting all of this onto Spike, something that she swore she would work very hard to make up for once everything was said and done. All right. I'm going to start now. Are you ready? Twilight asked nervously. Spike nodded, affirming his consent. All right. Does the name Starlight Glimmer sound at all familiar to you? Not at all. Spike's answer was to be expected. From his perspective, that was the first time he'd ever even heard the name. I'm guessing she's the one who messed with my head? Yes. Starlight Glimmer was the one who did this to you. Twilight placed great emphasis on the mayor's name, taking note from the time she'd witnessed Applejack trigger this very spell's effect on Rarity. A night that felt like it had been years ago now, even though it was just the other day. She was in our house. I was asleep, apparently. Does any of this sound familiar? She was in our house? Spike asked, slipping partially back into a state of panic. How did she get into our house? I don't know how Starlight Glimmer got in here, but I need to know what she did. Twilight did her best to keep her voice calm. Honestly, she was surprised that the spell hadn't given in by now. You were there. You met her. I really need you to remember what happened with you and Starlight Glimmer. But you just said that I... Something clicked in Spike's head, his eyes going wide. Wait. Wait, I, I, I remember now. With nothing more than a swift gesture for Twilight to follow, Spike leapt from the chair and dashed for his bedroom. Twilight didn't need to be told twice and was hot on his heels, ears perked and listening. I woke up in the middle of the night. I heard something weird and got kind of freaked out, so I went to go find you. Spike stopped for a moment, peering into his bedroom and tracing a path with a pointed claw, before turning back and heading the other direction. That's when I heard someone, uh, talking. I thought maybe you'd brought a friend over or something, but she was saying some really weird stuff. They reached Twilight's room, and he didn't waste any time rushing over to the side of her bed. Okay, um, uh, she was standing right here. Um, she was tucking you into bed. She was talking to you. Then she noticed me. She, she didn't freak out or anything. It was... It was like she knew me already. Twilight was taking every last word in very attentively, nodding and staying quiet to let Spike continue. There were dozens of questions she wanted to bombard him with, but time was a precious resource here, and she couldn't afford to waste any of it. Unfortunately, they were already out. Spike's words began to peter off, his gaze becoming less sharp as the fog around his memories filled in again. Tall I recognized what was about to happen and made a move to try and at least stall it for a few seconds. Spike! Spike! I really need you to focus right now! Twilight pleaded, rushing over and turning his head to face her. She peered deep into his eyes, hoping that she could at least get something more before the reset took full effect. I need you to tell me about Starlight Glimmer, remember? What was she doing in our house? 
She was... Ah! Spike's face slowly fell into an open claw, which he rubbed back and forth as if trying to soothe a headache. This lasted for a few seconds before he managed to look back up at her. He looked so tired. To all I could tell, he must have been fighting against it with all he had. Hard enough to at least give her something else to work with. She was talking like she knew you. Like she knew you personally. Twilight froze up. She had not been expecting that answer of all things. The all too familiar sensation of one question turning into a hundred more returned. Each one bouncing around like an army of incoherently screaming sugar high pinky pies. She had known since the day they met that there was something up with Starlight. Their first encounter with that nervous wreck of a unicorn was more than a little odd. But now, with this newly acquired piece of information, she looked on that encounter in a new light. It was like Starlight hadn't been expecting to see Twilight at that library in the first place, or something like that. But that didn't answer how Starlight could already have known about Twilight ahead of time. Unless, of course, they had met in the past, and Starlight had just used her magic to erase Twilight's memories of the event, much like with Spike or Knox. It was as Twilight was considering that little theory that Spike spoke up again. Starlight Glimmer, I was here to help, even if I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> 